I'm Tina Pang, the curator of Hong Kong Visual Culture, and this is Shirley Surya. Yeah, I'm Shirley. I'm a curator for design and architecture. We're in Henry Simon's studio to pack up the archive to bring to M Plus Storage. We've picked three projects that date from 60s, 70s, and 80s to share with you a little bit of Henry's design ethos. The first project we should talk about is the Asian magazine, because yes. this is where it all begins. Yep. It was the most uh, widely circulated English magazine about Asia. These are all printed in Tokyo. And then the headquarter moved to Hong Kong, and that's what brought Feiner to Hong Kong in 1961 as the art director. And you could tell even from the logo, the Asia magazine, this is all Feiner's hand and intervention, almost a script-like font to use. Some of the covers that we have here date to 1961, which is the date that Henry arrived in Hong Kong. We are really crazy about this cover um, because uh, when we saw it, like this is like pre-Michael Wolf days, oh my goodness. So just focusing on really vernacular, you know, local scenes in Hong Kong and the housing estate, you could see like from bird cages to people hanging out at the balcony. Of course, this sort of documented a really significant yeah. moment in Hong Kong history. Yes. And then you go in a completely other direction where you have this amazing bilingual treatment of an idea. We're just going to flip yeah. through the amazing <laughs> stories uh, that are in this magazine as an example. Cigarette ads don't exist anymore. Nightlife of Bangkok. To housing estate in Hong Kong. Yeah. Lives of ordinary people yeah. but done in a very dignified way. Yes. Yep. And I think the, the really impressive thing about Asia Magazine is that it debunks all of these kind of stereotypes about Asia. We are completely fascinated with uh, the HSBC annual report, uh, Henry Steiner Design. So if you know annual reports, they are very dry documents, which means that they're all statistics for investors to kind of put money into the bank and build trust, all of that. But Henry Steiner completely changed the game of annual report. This is an example from 1975. So if you were to open this up like a folder, you will see uh, basically get like a mural on the wall and you wonder, is this real or is this Photoshop? That it was actually a real commission on site. And then you open it and then there's another even more, like a long, long spread. So it's this kind of effort that's really being put, very imaginative and almost high budget production. Again, his sensitivity to scripts. So this is another annual report from 1972. And it's very simple, you know, it's like someone just drawing on a chalkboard. But then when you go in, there are like many more uh, booklets that are really using, using the Tamil script, the Chinese script, and using the Arabic script. And so this story about how the effort that has gone into the designing the annual report was featured in the magazine, HSBC Magazine. So this is a later one from 1981, in preparations for the new building. It's a feature on architecture. They ran a competition and invited a thousand children to submit drawings and models. He's included some of these submissions. Again, we could tell like Henry's uh, interest is uh, permeates through the content of the magazine. It's to focus on typography, from signage to yeah, everything. The last project we're going to talk about today is a very special project. It's a club known as the I Club. The idea of club here is not the dancing club, kind of like a proponent of a particular kind of lifestyle or taste making. And so everything from what, how the whole club was designed, the kind of artwork that is being shown there, which are largely from this, the collection of this guy called Alfred Siu, who's the developer, he's a structural engineer, but he really just gave completely free reign for Henry Steiner to come up with the branding for this club. And so these collateral, like what Tina said, is really, you could tell, different kinds of eye. And then of course, the idea of eye for us is like, oh, this is like the iPhone, you know, like the iPhone culture. But this is like 40 years ago. Uh, and he already came up with the idea of the eye, like about individualism. But also the fact that the eye are all of different shape is meant to show that it's fluid, it's dynamic, and it's ever-changing. So you want to pick up some of uh, your favourite so, things? I love, I love <laughs> the invitation. Um, yeah. So this project is from 1982 and this is an invitation to a launch. Once you open it, the reflection 
captures the eye. So once the club opens, the identity of the club as the space for, mm -hmm. as mentioned in Alfred Seale's letter to members, it's, it's bringing the best in art and entertainment to Hong Kong from around the world. This one is actually the opening catalog for the club. And you could tell the inverted eye, or even the idea of that it could be a Roman pillar or column, but also both a combination of serif and sans serif come together. But the main thing, about uh, iClub was really the art collection and really about uh, Henry's continuity in art direction and hiring and uh, working with photographers to really lay this out like a spread. I think it's, it's not just a high-end elite thing but it's really an international vision whether it's about hiring someone like a designer like Henry Steiner or even hiring an interior designer like Giorgio Orso or even just focusing on a particular kind of art and design collection. This is really a, an example of uh, M Plus's uh, focus on really collecting graphic design archives um, uh, as much as we acquire architectural archives. Even when we're looking at it, it not only reveals this sort of like design collateral or vision, but there's so much stories even in how this design could come about. And that's everything to do with the client, uh, everything to do with the atmosphere and the state of things in Hong Kong. Quite overblown every time we look at the graphic archives, like, oh my gosh, there's more to understand. You know, so. These archives will be open for the public to be able to kind of dig up and discover more stories. Yeah.